Hello, and welcome to the 2020 Western Horn Festival online edition. My name is Jenna Gardner, and I teach the horn at Western Illinois University. If you're just tuning in, welcome, and be sure to check out the previous sessions, which will all be available after broadcast. For this next session, we're joined by Illinois State University horn professor, Dr. Rachel Hockenberry. Dr. Hockenberry is the principal horn of the Queen City Opera and has performed with a wide variety of professional ensembles. She received her bachelor's degree in horn performance from James Madison University and her master's and doctoral degrees in horn performance from the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music. In addition to her horn training, she's a graduate of the Sistema Fellows Program at the New England Conservatory of Music and a certified yoga and meditation instructor. Thank you, Rachel, for your insights. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Rachel Hockenberry, and I'm the horn professor at Illinois State University in Normal, Illinois. I hope you're all having a wonderful time at uh, the Western Illinois Horn Festival, the virtual version. Um, and it's a pleasure for me to be able to share this with you today. So in addition to being a horn player and a horn teacher, something else that I do is uh, teach yoga. And um, I teach yoga at several different studios in Bloomington, Normal, Illinois. Um, and most people think of yoga as the postures or the asanas uh, that you do in a yoga class. Um, but yoga is actually much more than that. The movement is only one piece of yoga. And another integral piece of yoga is the practice of meditation. And that is something that I have found to be extremely helpful in my life as a horn player. So I wanted to talk to you all a little bit about meditation today, what it is, what it isn't, how it can help you uh, as a musician, as a hornist. And I wanna take you through a little bit of a meditation practice today. So first of all, what meditation is not. Um, many people think that meditation is clearing your mind or emptying your mind. I don't know if that's possible. Perhaps uh, the you know, best meditators in the world can, can do that. Um, but that's not actually what meditation is. It's not emptying the mind. It's not clearing the mind. I've never ever been able to do that. Um, meditation is focusing the mind. It's focusing the mind on a singular thing, be it a word or a phrase or perhaps most commonly your breath. Um, so if we can over time train our minds to be so focused that we're only focusing on that one particular thing, imagine how that can help you as a horn player, uh, not only in your practice sessions, uh, but certainly in auditions and in performances. So meditation is a focusing of the mind. Now, there are many different types of meditation, uh, and we certainly don't have time to go through all of the different types today, and I'm certainly not an expert in all of the different types of meditation, but I wanna talk to you about a few of them that I think you might find particularly helpful. Um, the first of those is a uh, body scan meditation. Um, and that's exactly what it sounds like. So, you know, you go through uh, and think about every part of your body. So perhaps starting with the top of your head, the scalp, right? And then maybe going to the forehead and moving all the way down your face. Then going to the jaw, the throat, the neck, the shoulders moving all the way down until you've gotten all the way down to your toes. And what I mean by focusing on those things is that you're focusing on relaxing them. 
So you might find that if you're feeling quite anxious and stressed out when you go into a meditation, your face might be scrunched, you know. And if you focus on relaxing the forehead, making the forehead smooth and free from wrinkles, then that begins to relax the rest of your face. And for horn players, the brass players especially, I think it's important to focus on the jaw and on relaxing the jaw. So often when we get tension in our bodies, it makes our jaw kind of go like this. And uh, that is, of course, bad for all sorts of reasons when we're playing the horn. So the more that we can relax the face and promote relaxation in the whole body when we're just simply sitting still, we can carry that over into our horn playing. So that's a body scan meditation. I should also say that all of the types of meditation I'm going to talk to you about today uh, are going to be under uh, what's referred to as a guided meditation. So as I take you through a meditation practice in a few minutes, I'm going to be guiding you through it. In other words, I'm going to be giving you instructions the whole time. So a guided meditation is, is exactly that. When you have instructions through the process, um, you know, there are other various forms of, of meditation that are not guided. You know, essentially you're, you're sitting in silence, right? Focusing the mind. Um, I find that to be a little bit too challenging for most people as, at the introductory level. So as you experiment with meditation on your own, uh, there are lots of great guided meditation apps out there. Uh, there's the Calm app, there's uh, Insight Timer, and there's lots of other ones that are uh, subscription services, but they all usually have a free version as well, if you just like to give it a try. Um, I often use a guided meditation before performances and before auditions, and I found it to be extremely helpful. The next type of meditation we're going to talk about is a mantra meditation. And a mantra is simply a word or a short phrase um, that is something that you want to cultivate during your meditation practice or perhaps the reason that you're meditating that day. What are you hoping to gain or cultivate during this meditation? And you want your mantra to be something simple um, so that it doesn't require a lot of thought. You don't want it to be a long, drawn-out thing, just something very, very simple. Um, one that I like to use a lot and one that's easy to align with the breath, because this is all about focusing on the breath, so we want the words to align with the breath, um, is on an inhale, you can think the word, let. And on an exhale, you can think the word go, right? So it's just over and over again. Inhale, let. Exhale, go. Again, something simple um, that is easy for you to remember. Um, if you wanted to use a, a Sanskrit word, which very often different, um, you know, yoga um, practices use a lot of Sanskrit words, uh, the word for peace is a two-syllable word, shanti. So you can inhale on the first syllable, shan, and exhale on the second syllable, ti. Those are two mantras that I like to use a lot, right, because we want to cultivate that shanti, that peace in our body and in our mind. And for the English one, let go, right? We want to let go of the worry, the tension, the anxiety, the fear. It's just reminding us to be free and to let go. So that's a mantra meditation. Again, aligning it with the breath, keeping it very simple, but giving you something to focus on. The last type of meditation I want to talk with you about today is perhaps my favorite one, and it's called a loving kindness meditation. And this is a type of gratitude meditation and it's meant to cultivate gratitude in your mind, your body, and your heart. 
So we begin by, again, using a bit of a mantra, uh, but it changes as we go. So you can inhale thinking the word love and blessings to, right? Or, or perhaps even just keeping it simple and saying, I love or I send love to, something along those lines, right? So on your inhale, you're going to say that same phrase on every inhale. And on the exhale, you're going to start with yourself, right? So I send love to myself or me, right? Um, and just say that a few times. Go for a few breaths on, on that particular mantra. And then as you feel ready, we move on from ourselves and we go to the people in life who we care about the most, right? Inhale, love and blessings to exhale the name of a person perhaps your best friend or your partner or your mom or your dad or your pet you know it doesn't matter just the people who you love the most and you can linger on any one person for as long as you would like you can cycle through people as many times as you would like but we start with the people uh, once we move on from ourselves we start with those who we love the most who is the easiest for us to send love and blessings to. Then we move on to people who maybe we aren't quite as close with, but we still want to send them love and blessings anyway. So maybe it's that person in your class who's like, you know, I really don't know them that well, but I really like them and, and appreciate them and I want to send them some love and blessings today. Maybe it's a relative you haven't talked to in a while or an old friend who moved away, you know, something like that. Um, you want to send those people love and blessings. Then we get to the part that's a little bit more challenging, right? Maybe we start thinking about people who we don't like so much or people who challenge us, uh, you know, or someone who we got in a fight with, you know, but we understand that there are people in this world trying their best and they deserve love and blessings too. So we send them those love and blessings. And then finally, once we feel ready, once we feel that we've cycled through enough people, animals, and all of that, we inhale love and blessings to, and we exhale all beings everywhere. And you can linger on that last one for as long as you would like. And I find that by the time I get there, I am just feeling so good. And, and I want to linger there for a while. I want to linger there for several minutes just sending love and blessings to all beings everywhere. Um, I even have tattooed on my arm, may all beings everywhere be happy and free, and that is a part of that loving kindness meditation. So those are a few different types of meditations um, that are worthy of practicing. And we do refer to meditation as a practice. Um, it's just like anything, it takes time to cultivate. So maybe you've tried meditating before, maybe you've only given it a try or two tries and you've gone, oh, it didn't really work for me. Um, yeah, it probably didn't, you know, but it's the same way that you probably didn't have a lip trill the first time you ever tried to do it. I know I didn't. I didn't have a lip trill for the first uh, several years I tried to do it. Um, you know, you probably couldn't play a high C the very first time you tried, right? It takes practice. And like anything, meditation is a skill. And if we want to cultivate that skill, then we have to practice it. Um, you know, just like you would never try playing uh, an etude at a tempo faster than you're able to actually do it. Um, you know, you don't want to practice a form of meditation that's going to be really difficult for you the first time around. You'll also likely find that you won't be able to meditate for very long the first couple of times that you try. You'll find that your mind is very scattered probably and that's okay. What we want to do when we're meditating is instead of every time we notice our mind wandering thinking about what we have to do next or that person who we just got mad at or, you know, oh, I wonder how, uh, what I'm going to make for dinner tonight. You know, anytime you find that happening, instead of going, oh, I'm supposed to be meditating. I can't believe this. I'm, I suck at this. Blah, blah, blah. Just say, just come back to your breath. 
come back to your mantra, or if you're doing a guided meditation, listen to the words either that I'm saying or that whoever is guiding you through that meditation, just start focusing on their words again, right? We don't need to berate ourselves during meditation that defeats the purpose. Know that your mind will wander, especially the first several times you're trying it. Or even if you're an experienced meditator, your mind is still going to wander from time to time. Another point that I want to bring up is that sometimes if you're coming to meditation from a state of high anxiety, um, then just trying to sit still uh, is not going to work super well for you. Um, or potentially not if you're feeling extremely anxious like to the point of panic attack or something like that so don't expect yourself to just be able to sit down and meditate especially in these early stages when you're not familiar with it yet and it's not comfortable um, in those states it's okay to keep your eyes open and it's okay and it can actually be very helpful to add some movement to your breath so on your inhale you can add some arm movements bringing the arms overhead and exhale lower the arms right try that with me once we inhale through the nose raise the arms up overhead and exhale lower the arms matching the pace of the arm movement to the pace of your breath right it's not unlike some of these exercises that happen if any of you guys have done breathing gym, right? So on the inhale, halfway through the inhale, our arms are halfway up out to the side. And once we've completed our inhale, the arms are up overhead. And halfway through the exhale, our arms are halfway down. And as we complete the exhale, our arms come all the way down. If you're feeling very anxious, it can be really helpful to add some body movements to what you're doing. It gives your body something to do with that anxious energy that you feeling that you're feeling. And it doesn't have to be arm movements. You can add, you know, if you're standing, you can add some squats to it, right? As you as you inhale, come down into a squatting position and as you exhale, slowly bring yourself back up. Whatever your body needs, feel free to do that. So that was a very brief overview into meditation. What I'd like to do uh, is take you through about a five minute long uh, body scan guided meditation. So go ahead and take an opportunity now to find a comfortable seat. So maybe you're sitting in a chair Maybe you're sitting on the floor, uh, or maybe like me, you're uh, sitting on a rock <laughs> on the hillside, which is where I'm sitting right now. Um, but just find a comfortable seat for yourself. And perhaps your legs are crossed, perhaps your legs are sitting uh, stretched out in front of you. Or if sitting's not comfortable for you, then you can lay down on your back. Um, and as you're laying down, perhaps keep your knees bent, so keep the soles of your feet on the ground. Um, make sure you're comfortable, but not quite comfortable enough that you're going to fall asleep. Um, and keeping the knees bent and the soles of the feet on the ground can help you with that. If you're in a seated position, go ahead and take a moment to bring your shoulders up by your ears. And then allow them to drop back and down. So we're broad here through the chest and through the collarbones. And the crown of your head, the top of your head, feel it lengthening upwards towards the ceiling if you're inside, or in my case, towards the sky. Okay. So our spine is long. And we're in a comfortable seated position. And your hands can be folded in your lap or they can be on top of your knees, anywhere that's comfortable for you. And once you feel like you're in a position that you can stay in for a few minutes, go ahead and close the eyes. Just gently blink them closed. It should be a very relaxed position for you. And just begin to take some slow breaths. We'll inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. 
And as you inhale, feel the belly expand first, then the chest, and then the collarbones. And as you exhale, allow the collarbones to deflate first, and then the chest, and then the belly. Inhale, belly, chest, collarbones, and exhale, collarbones, chest, belly. Come through this three-part breath, or this dirga pranayama, at your own pace. On your next inhale, at whatever speed your inhale happens to be, add an evenly spaced count to four to that inhale. And add that same evenly spaced count to four to your exhale. Striving to make the inhale and the exhale the same length as one another. And as you feel ready, the next time you inhale, see if you can make it take a little bit longer to count to four. And match this new slower four count on your exhale. And as we sit here breathing, allow the muscles in your scalp to relax. The forehead becomes smooth and relaxed. The eyelids are ever so gently closed and the eyes are resting in the sockets. The cheeks are smooth. The tongue rests in the mouth. And the jaw hangs loosely. And you may even find that your lips begin to part. Your throat is open and free. And the neck is long and relaxed. The shoulders rest away from the ears. The collarbones are broad. The chest is open and free. Your arms are hanging heavy. And with each exhale, your torso relaxes completely. Your legs are resting comfortably. The ankles are loose and free. And your feet and toes are completely relaxed. Breathing comfortably now. Allow the feeling of relaxation to take over your entire body. 
every cell feeling liberated and free. As you feel ready, allow the breath to deepen and allow this deepening of the breath to gradually bring your awareness back to your surroundings. Start to make some gentle movements with your body, perhaps wiggling the fingers and toes. And as you feel ready, Slowly allow the eyes to blink open. Thank you so much for sharing this meditation practice with me today. I hope that you find it useful and that you can bring it in to your life as a musician to great benefit. I wish you all a good day. Namaste. Thank you for watching. Please join us for our next session, Breathing for Horn Players, presented by Texas State University San Marcos horn professor, Dr. Caroline Steiger. The 2020 Western Horn Festival is offered free to the public. If you would like to make a donation to support students facing unexpected hardship due to COVID-19, text WIUCARE to the number 41444. Thank you.